Thank you, thank you very much. Is there more to magic than just tricks? <laughs> that moment just there, that moment of, oh, wow. I had that moment of excitement, that wonder. I had that moment when I was 10 years old and I was standing in Hamley's toy shop in London. I was this high and I saw a guy demonstrating a simple magic trick. And I, I too, I had that, that moment of just, wow, that was incredible. How do you do that? So I spent all my pocket money that week on this little trick. And I went away and I, I learned it. And that was it. That's what got me hooked. Um, from that moment on, I carried on performing magic. I got little bits and pieces, uh, presents from my mum and dad, family members for Christmas, for birthdays, all different things like that. And I carried on through this throughout my uh, school year, uh, for my primary school and high school. And then I came here to Edinburgh Napier University and studied sports technology. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to do with magic at all. What I did learn though was I learned about oh, lots of materials, learned about sports and how the electrical, electrical and mechanical engineering as well all rolled into one. Nothing to do with magic at all. But I always had a deck of cards on me. I was always um, trying out different things with different people. And I'm going to give you an example of that just now. We'll try this with, uh, what's your name? So he gives away a massive round of applause. Come and join me up on stage. Brilliant. Zoe, have you done any magic before? No. No? Good. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong Zoe. <laughs> uh, no, we're going to try something with a deck of cards, OK? Let's take them out. And Zoe, what I need you to do, I want you to reach in. I want you to take out any card you want. Don't let me see it, though. It's up to you. Anyone you want. Fantastic. Have a look at it. And can I get you to sign your name on it for me as well? Nice and big all over the face of the card in front of it. And then once you've done that, if you show the audience for me. Perfect. Don't, I'll look away. Fantastic. I'll take the pen back because they're expensive and I'm Scottish. <laughs> <laughs> and Zoe, can I get you to shout stop for me wherever you want? Stop. And pop your one back on top. Fantastic. <laughs> Don't worry, it's not that type of trick. <laughs> so what I'm going to attempt to do, I'm going to try and get your card to go from the middle of the deck to the top without anyone noticing. Watch closely, here we go. Did you see it happen? No. No. no, no. <laughs> oh. Good, because it's not happened yet. <laughs> so can you tap the top for me? Perfect. That's when it happens just there. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. The six of hearts. I'm not saying it's your card, I'm saying it's the Six of Hearts. <laughs> Very good, I know. Can I borrow your hand a second, though, please? Excellent, just there. I'm going to take the Six and leave it in your hand. I'll take the next one, the Eight. That wasn't your card either. No. Well, that's awkward. <laughs> I'll try something with the Eight just over here. So if I take the Eight and shake, it disappears. It always reappears by my head, though. <laughs> I'll do that one again for you. I'll show you the front of the hand and the back. It's still there. So do you know what that is? Showing off. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. What it actually is, it's actually misdirection. It's misdirection. The real magic actually happened in your hand. Yeah. <laughs> no. Go for it. Turn it over and show everybody. <laughs> it is, in fact, your sign. <laughs> this is just a warm-up. It gets better. <laughs> so we pop it back on top for me. Signed on the top, your king of clubs. I'm going to take about half the cards, and your king goes from the top, Zoe, into the middle. Keep your eye on it, it's going to jump to the top again. Can you push it into the middle? Have you push it in? That's it. Oh, no. No? <laughs> <laughs> the big finale for you, Zoe, I'm going to leave it on the top of the deck of cards. Can you pop your hand on top for me? And your other hand underneath. That's it. Now this part of the trick, it comes with a warning. Probably going to remember this moment for the rest of your life. Are you okay with that? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. yeah. Here we go. Three. Are you positive? positive? Three, two, one. Did you feel that happen? Mm -hmm. Yeah? <laughs> if you take your hands away from me, please. And you can see that every single card actually disappears. <laughs> Apart from your signed King of Clubs, which you can keep as a souvenir. Oh, thank you so thank much. You Give us a round of applause. Is there more to magic than just tricks? What you just experienced there, you experienced a few tricks. 
But on a more personal level, Zoe experienced almost like real magic. It happened just there. I just sort of, this is what I do for a job, it's my full-time job. Um, after grad, well, I graduated uh, from uni after doing four years of studies. Um, I actually unfortunately missed my graduation ceremony, to my mum and dad's delight. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but I missed it for a, a reason. The reason was I was actually out in Las Vegas working on a show out there for a month. Um, and when I was in Vegas, I, uh, I bumped into a guy. Um, I was actually having lunch one day in, uh, in Subway, and I was having a sandwich, sitting there myself, and a guy came in, a scruffy looking guy, and he came up to me, and he bumped into the table, and he said, hey mate, do you want to buy these binoculars? Only one of the lens works. And I was like, no, I'm okay, thanks. Just <laughs> continued eating my sandwich. And then he said, and he lifted up his top, and he said, do you want to buy this machete instead? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> true story this. Um, I'll give you both of them for $50. And just at this point, he sort of grabbed my attention now, because I had a machete. <laughs> and he said, I said to him, uh, no thanks. And he interrupted me and he said, I've not eaten for three days. I was like, right, okay, I could maybe solve this problem. I'll, I'll buy you a sandwich instead. And it sort of, the, the expression on his face, he just lit up. He's like, really, you do that? And I was like, yeah, I'll buy you a sandwich and sit down, we'll have a chat. So I went and bought him a sandwich. He uh, sat down, we had a chat. Uh, his name was Jeff. And Jeff had lost everything in Vegas. He'd lost his house, his family, all his money due to gambling. So we chatted about this. We chatted about um, my sort of story as well, my background with magic. And he said, uh, Elliot, if you could really do magic, could you turn maybe money? Or could you multiply money? I said, do you have any money on you? Stupid question, Elliot. <laughs> but he said, yes, I actually have uh, one dollar on me. And this was Jeff's dollar. It's the actual one he actually gave me to this uh, to keep as a, as a little souvenir of uh, my time sort of that I spent with them that one time. And this is the trick that I showed Jeff. So I took the one dollar bill, I showed both hands empty. I took it, I folded it in once, twice and three times just this. And when I clicked my fingers, I changed the one dollar bill into a ten pound note <laughs> sterling. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now that was no use to Jeff. <laughs> I didn't think he was going to go travelling much. Um, so what I did do is I, I showed both hands empty. I folded it once, twice, three times. Like this. I clicked my fingers and that's when it happened. It changed back into Jeff's one dollar bill. Just like that. Thank you very much. And this face lit up just like yours, um, which brings me back to the question, is there more to magic than just tricks? I just did a trick, but to Jeff, it didn't seem like a trick. It took him away from his world of having nothing um, to trying to sell a machete and a pair of binoculars to random people just so he could eat. Um, so yeah, that was Vegas and that little story there. And, and also what else happened after that? That really made me think and it sort of got me thinking about what I do. It's what I do for a living is, is magic. I put a smile on people's faces. It's, it's what I do as a job, but that's not just because of me doing the magic. I suppose anybody out there can do this. They can put smiles on people's faces. Another story, a uh, quick one, um, is that after doing all this and come back from Vegas, I, um, I end up doing uh, one gig that sort of stood out for me. And I do lots of gigs. I do a lot of weddings, corporate events, private parties. This one private party was up the north of Scotland. And on this particular day, I was driving up there, and it was, it was an 85th birthday party um, in a private house, and it was just a small family get-together. Uh, so I drove up, drove up there through, it was about, it was about two and a half hours up north, uh, here from Edinburgh, and it was torrential rain weather. It was, it was horrible. It took, me, it took me ages to get up there. So I eventually arrived, and I did a small show in the living room for, for the kids, um, and then I went into the, the dining room and performed for the adults and everyone together. And um, Mrs. McGregor, the, the woman that had booked me, she said, oh, can you come through to, to, the, uh, to the, 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 the other room? Um, because uh, we've got Mr. McGregor there, it's his, his 85th birthday coming up, and it's, we really want to perform something for him. So I went into the room, and yeah, I went in there, and he was in bed, he wasn't very well. And I performed some magic tricks, and his face lit up again, just like your faces lit up when I performed that little trick. And is, I then left uh, the party, 
And usually a couple of weeks later, I send the, all my clients a little email going, did you enjoy the magic? Did you get a nice review and stuff like that? And I didn't hear anything back. I thought, that's strange. And then I had a, an email actually about two months later. And I've actually got it with me today. So I'm going to read it to you. And it was from Mrs. McGregor. And it says, Dear Elliot, Firstly, thank you so much for battling the weather and making up to perform at our little soiree. The children and adults alike loved your little show. I think you have a few new fans. <laughs> My husband had not been very well and the party was actually two weeks before his 85th birthday. We had moved the party forward because of this. Unfortunately, he never made it to this age and sadly passed away peacefully on the Tuesday evening. I'd just like to say thank you very much for the last memories we have of him. The smile on his face when he did those tricks we will never forget. Thanks again, Elliot, and all the best with your career, Mrs. McGregor. Is there more to magic than just tricks? For the McGregor family, yeah. That was the last time they saw Mr. McGregor smile and be happy before he passed away. They'll always sort of cherish those memories. For me, other people looking in, they might think, it's a few card tricks, it's turning money around. For me, it's not. It's, it's creating those memories, it's leaving a lasting impression with people. And as I said before, you can go out and do this. So as I say, I do the magic. I take people away from their daily struggle. It might be that you've had a, a tough week. Uh, it might be that you've, I don't know, you've lost someone recently. It might be that you've, I don't know, you've just fell, fell over, tripped over yourself coming here today. Um, but the main thing is you've got to stay happy, stay focused, and you can all do this in your, your daily life. So even if you're walking down the street, smile at people. <laughs> it's, a, it's a strange thing to do, but... I do it all the time. If you're on the train or the tube and you're sitting next to someone, just have a conversation with them. You might make their day. So is there more to magic than just tricks? I personally think there is. Thank you very much.